Thank you, Chris, for inviting me to clarify the regulatory framework uh, around the embedded generation, what we do, how we do it, and what we expect uh, when we receive applications for registration or licensing at NERSA. Uh, we will outline the process, and I will also um, uh, be happy if you could share some of your views with us at NERSA so that we can become much more efficient in uh, improving our processes for these applications. So I must say that upfront because there was a sense of uh, some frustration and uh, I just want to say it upfront so that nobody is going to be asking questions about what NERSA, what are you doing NERSA about this, you're taking so long and all of that. So I'm trying to close it right at the beginning so that you know that NERSA is there uh, to make sure that when you Bring these applications. We will do our best to process them and, and, and try to be as efficient as we could be. We've got processes in place right now. So if you have any ideas of, that you can bring to the regulator and say, regulator, you can do a better job and to investors out there, if only you can take care of some of the interest of investors in this manner. So I'll welcome that at the end of, the, uh, of my presentation. Right, uh, so today um, um, I'm going to then um, look into just a regulatory framework and this is going to be the outline of my presentation. So I'm going to deal with uh, the policy framework on embedded generation as well as the legal and regulatory uh, environment around um, embedded generation. Um, talk about, uh, I'm not going to take much time there because you already know, you know, the status of the IEP, the IRP, and other mechanisms that are considered on those documents or the policy documents. And then also um, talk about the processes that we follow in terms of licensing as well as registration processes in South Africa and some of the challenges that uh, we have uh, come across or some of them that we are anticipating. Okay, um, let me just clarify up front uh, in terms of the Electricity Act. I'm just going to skip the, the, regulate, the governing legislation, which is the NERSA Act of 2004, because really you don't get much of the specific provisions there. It is really just the governance legislation. Uh, it doesn't deal with the specific provisions of the Electricity Regulations Act. So um, what we uh, do in terms of the Electricity Regulations Act, we get the mandate, let me just say that the mandate of regulating the operation. Here it is very clear, it's the operation because we are regulating the activity. Uh, so it is the activity itself, not necessarily the facility, but it is the operation activity of the generation, transmission, as well as uh, the distribution. Uh, of those facilities that are supposed to be licensed or that are supposed to be registered. So you get that in the, in the Electricity Regulations Act. So there are also policies or the legal framework that governs or provide guidance as to the importance of those activities in ensuring the orderly development of the electricity industry. So those are the ones that are mentioned uh, in the last bullet point. So the uh, current policy framework uh, for the new generation um, doesn't contain any capacity for distributed generation, but it is just catered for in the draft IRP. IRP. Um, so uh, in the draft IRP, you will see that in the initial one, we had about um, 200, but I think it has now been increased to 500. At least that's what we are informed as of May, if you still remember, as of May when Minister approved that NERSA can now go ahead and uh, license uh, any um, embedded generation that starts from 1 megawatt to 10 megawatts. And we must be guided by the current draft of the IRP, which sets the maximum to 500 megawatts. So we are still talking about um, the, 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 the draft IRP at this moment. So the minister provided a directive by means of a letter to NERSA uh, that NERSA should proceed to um, register 
the um, the distributed generation i think is the licensing not necessarily to register it is the licensing because the registration process has already started if you remember in terms of the notice that was published in november 2017 so after that, NERSA then was supposed to have started with the registration of um, uh, the embedded generation for uh, anything that is up to one megawatt. So that requires registration. So the recent development, it has to do with the licensing part. And the licensing part is the one where we received a letter in May from the minister to say that NERSA uh, is allowed now to consider applications for distributed generation, um, it is, which is up to the maximum of 500 megawatts. It doesn't mean that this 500 megawatts is a single <laughs> it's a single project. I think here um, uh, the team that was preparing this for me is just indicating what I've stated earlier on, that you've got that 500 megawatts that is in the current draft of the IRP. Remember, the one that was published last year, it had about 200 megawatts. So the current draft has about 500 megawatts. So the letter of the minister says, let's take guidance as NERSA on that 500 megawatts that is in the current draft that went to Netlek. So that's what we have. So, so we'll consider the 500 megawatts that, that is there. So what does it mean when you unpack this 500 megawatts? It simply means that you can, as NERSA, you can consider applications of one megawatt up to 10 megawatts. So that's what we will do. So one megawatt up to 10 megawatts, we can now um, consider those applications for licensing because now we've got that letter from minister we don't need to then get any other because it gives them the um, the go ahead to deviate from the IRP I just wanted to clarify that bullet point so that you understand exactly uh, what is meant by that 500 megawatt threshold that is mentioned so the the departure point then um, is that the, it, it does not, it, there's no deviation from the principle uh, that is in the uh, just the clarity in the in the notice that was published in November 2017 for Schedule One of the amended Re Electricity Regulations Act. So these are two different things. The one that was uh, published in November 2017 it deals with the uh, registration. So remember before you only had exemptions. So it currently then you will have, you will have to do as NERSA the licensing part and then exempt activities that do not require a license. That was the uh, situation before. But come November 2017, then the notice um, then allowed NERSA to start registering activities that do not require a license. So the registration uh, activity was then introduced by that notice of November 2017. So the earlier or the preceding um, a bullet point, it was now dealing with the licensing now of a specific um, megawatt, which is one to 10 megawatts. So any generation facility with an installed capacity of more than one megawatt, which is not provided for registration in Schedule 2 that was published, shall have to be licensed in terms of the Electricity Regulations Act. So I hope that one now it has been clarified. Um, this is just the repetition of what I've said here on, the, on that first bullet point, indicating that Minister gazetted the licensing, and ex licensing exemption and registration notice. So which was now clarifying all of those things that require licensing, those that require uh, exemptions, and those that require registration. So you will get all of those details in that notice that was published in November 2017. So on the 30th of October 2018, the energy regulator approved the registration procedure, registration application forms, as well as the uh, registration certificates and procedures. Let me uh, explain this because um, there was an understanding, or well, not understanding, I think there was an impression uh, that after minister has published that notice in November 2017, people f thought that well, people can just come with a number of applications. All that you need to do, you just do it, you know, a, 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 a tick, and then put those and say, yes, the database 
just put all of those things in the database. Not understanding that um, the registration activity, it's an administrative action. Why I say it's an administrative action? If you go to section nine of the Electricity Regulations Act, it states clearly how you deal with the application for registration. So it will, it will state clearly that the registration application can only uh, be approved by the energy regulator. As you all know here, the very first paragraph of my, of my, of, on the slide that I've read out, where I stated the governing legislation, which is the National Energy Regulator Act of 2004, it states that the decision of the energy regulator is that decision that is taken by the majority of the serving members, meaning it's a collective decision. So there is no way that you will come with an application and therefore somebody at, at his desk, there's a single person there, will take and tick it and say, well, it is approved, then we put it in the database. So maybe that was the confusion that was there it will follow the same process as the licensing. And that you cannot, as a regulator, as a creature of statute, deviate from what the law prescribes. So what you get in, in section nine, it's, actu it's actually divided into two. The first part tells you that when, the, when you receive an application, it says it must, it doesn't say may, and I must emphasize that because people did not understand it and they were frustrated. It says it must be accompanied by a registration fee. That's the first thing. It says by the registration fee. And secondly, it then states that when you process it, now nurses are considering that application and you evaluate it. It says then you must have procedures it's again prescribed in the law. That's the second thing that is prescribed. The third thing that is prescribed in the law, it says um, you must also issue conditions of registration. So those are the third, the third, that is the third requirement. The fourth thing that is there, and the industry again, why is NERSA coming up with the rules? Because I remember the time when we published the rules. You go to section 35, because again, we struggled there, hence we tried to put some of the things in there, and I'm going ahead with my presentation, so I don't like to be confined in one thing, because I would like to just engage with the audience so that they can understand the point that I'm making. So the rules in, in section 35, they will tell you what you do in terms of registration. So you can't just do things the way that you feel that people will come in here. Nelsa, they said you must do it immediately. Yes, it's immediately because you, you're supposed to be efficient in your regulatory processes and, and make sure that when they bring something, you consider it properly, you have applied your mind, and also you may be required to follow due process because we cannot deviate from due process. So those are the things that um, now this bullet point, the second bullet point, uh, are trying to deal with. Uh, so what is then uh, what what has then happened is that uh, NERSA we have published a um, a, a consultation paper uh, for comments regarding the registration fee, so that you know exactly how much you are supposed to pay. And we have explained we provided some three options uh, in that in that consultation paper, and we indicated why we cho we chose a, 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 a the, 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 the the other option. And what, how much we are supposed to pay is, is 200 trends. We try to balance it up, but then that's 200 trends that uh, is supposed to be paid. And that decision was taken by the energy regulator in March of this year. So following that decision then, and also because late last year, NERSA also approved the procedures and we've tried to put some of the things and processes that you will have in the rules. We have put them in the procedures so that it is much clearer how we proceed with this process. Everybody knows and it provides the certainty and the predictability that is required. So that has now been done. So the legal and regulatory environment for embedded generation. So the registration procedure is aimed at enabling the energy regulator to execute its mandate. And that is the mandate that I've just outlined in terms of section nine. And just to complete section nine, the first part is the one that I've outlined in terms of what is stipulated. The second part of that section 
it's not written here, I'm simplifying it, is that it states clearly, if there is no registration fee, if the application is not accompanied by a registration fee, it says the energy regulator may decline. So you see that process there. That is, so if we decline it, uh, and then you'll say, how, on what grounds? Because you may challenge us, because there's a decision of the energy regulator, and you may take it on review. But we must be able then to provide uh, the reasons and, and demonstrate. So it even gives us powers to decline the application that is not accompanied by a registration fee, and as well as one that is not in compliance with the procedures and you must also have conditions that are attached. So all of those things are prescribed in section 92, section 92 of the Electricity Regulations Act. So the purpose of registration procedure is, uh, procedure is to ensure the orderly development of the electricity infrastructure and also to make sure that uh, we fulfill the objectives that are uh, enumerated in the uh, Electricity Regulations Act. It is also to make sure that uh, we establish guidelines under which the energy regulator must consider and evaluate registration applications that qualify uh, for registration. So it gives us, it provides that guideline uh, as to how we should go about. And also it uh, provides for processes as well as and procedures to be followed so that also uh, the industry players know exactly what is expected of them, what you need to submit to the regulator, what you need to do, and when you submit your application to the regulator, what does the regulator do with that application? What process does the regulator embark on? Uh, when they receive the application. So I think that is now uh, clarified. So here we thought we should also take the opportunity to indicate how uh, to apply for the registration. I, f I forgot to mention the form. The form was also is also prescribed in that section that it must be in the prescribed um, a registration form. So the application must be done by the owner or the operator of the generation facility by filling in the registration application form. That registration application form, it was approved last year. It is available. If you are unable to access it from the NERSA website, please indicate so, so that we can improve uh, the friendliness of our website. So the application form should then uh, be accompanied by the consent as well as approve a letter from the licensed network service provider or licensee for connection so that we know that uh, you will be connecting um, uh, at a particular point and where the facility is going to be and that um, the um, operator uh, is aware or the provider of the service is aware that you will be connecting uh, to its um, um, uh, network. So the power purchase agreement between the generator and the consumer, including the, applicative, the applicable uh, tariffs, uh, that you must also indicate in your application, and also the wheeling agreement, uh, you can also include that in your application so that we have those things ready. Proof of payment of the once off uh, 200 registration fee per facility as per section 92, and I think also 91 of the Electricity Regulations Act, read with section 35, which is the one that makes reference to the rules. So you will be complying with that when you make payment for the registration application. So all of that information, you can put it in the form and also show the invoice and attach the invoice there to show so that there's no um, um, uh, delay in the processing of your application. What we are also trying to do, uh, we are trying to get the energy regulator to delegate the mandate to the electricity subcommittee so that we don't have to start at the electricity subcommittee and then go to the energy regulator. So we have actually requested, so we'll see maybe this uh, coming week when the energy regulator meets so that we can then process those things through the electricity subcommittee rather than to wait for the board to meet. Uh, we're hoping that they will delegate that function so that we can process these things quite faster. Um, and then applications for registration submitted to NERSA in writing and addressed to the head of department uh, of the electricity, um, of the electricity uh, compliance division. So that is, a, that is the, um, the process that we follow. 
uh, you will see that approval process and I think you do have my, uh, I'm not going to really go through all of that, but it just shows then what will then happen uh, in all of those things. So that is the process that is outlined there so that you can see uh, uh, from those diagram, from that diagram what uh, we, is intended in terms of the applications. Um, then the, I, I'm not going to spend much. I've already introduced the part about the ARP here. I was just, uh, it, it is it's just a slide that talks to the planning process itself and then also referring to section four of the generation regulations that outline the planning process and the responsibilities as outlined there, uh, which is the responsibilities of the minister with regards to developing the IRP and all of that. So this is just the planning process. And once those things are put in the IRP, everybody uh, gets to see them. And one of the, the one that refers to the embedded generation is the one that I explained earlier on to say that initially from the one that was published, we had 200 megawatts, but it has been increased to 500 megawatts. And in terms of the letter from minister, it says, work on the basis of the proposed 500 megawatts uh, that is in the, that is in the current draft IRP. So that's what we are um, going to be working on. Okay, so here is all the planning processes and we know what is happening here. And then um, that is the process that is followed for the IRP when they come up with the assumptions and what is happening and maybe the department, uh, it will clarify it, um, uh, obviously during these processes as to what they take into account when they come up with the um, assumptions. Okay, um, can I just skip this? We already know what is in the ARP, what is provided for. I summarize the part that is relevant to today's discussion. Yeah, so uh, unlocking and managing the potential of distributed embedded generation. Um, uh, we're just talking about the two different market-based instruments uh, or mechanisms that are used. And these are the examples here that we are providing here as well as the, um, the operating support schemes, such as your feed-in tariffs and all of those. And we know the, uh, what we have done also for the renewables uh, in terms of the feed-in tariffs, where we kind of work on that maxima in a way, uh, just as a guiding principle uh, in, terms of the, um, in terms of the price that they put in the PPA. So this is to us just to mention, uh, by the way. So the need or otherwise for um, generation and licensing distributed uh, embedded generation um, the registration procedure, I've already indicated that, that it helps the energy regulator. Did, um, am I not repeating here? I think this is a repetition. Um, uh, I think also on this slide, I have summarized this slide as well, where I provided clarification to say that for those projects that are above one megawatt, up to 10 megawatts, that letter that we receive from minister giving NERSA a go ahead is the one that we will work on. And, um, and, and, and also that we will be, minister did that in terms of section 10 uh, sub 2G of the Electricity Regulations Act. Okay. Um, uh, this is just regional developments, what is happening in other um, countries here in Africa and the, the, the factors that inform their choices of uh, distributed uh, generation systems and the technology it depends on those countries, what works for them and their regulatory framework. So really we're just uh, sharing what is happening in other countries and then comparing with what we are doing in South Africa. Okay. Um, Yeah, this is just to show the, the importance really of, 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 uh, of, the, uh, of the embedded generation, really the, the positive contribution it makes uh, uh, in the country and also um, to, to reduce the carbon emissions. Um, I think I'm going to just come to this one, this slide that just shows the challenges um, that we, 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 we have sort of uh, looking at. Reduce the revenue from electricity sales. Well, this is just uh, what other people are saying if everybody now is moving towards that, but we know that you will still need <laughs> electricity from ESCOM because of the intermittencies or, you know, uh, on this. But um, And then others are talking about safety hazards. Those are some of the things that are brought to our attention 
potential uh, for increased electricity and infrastructure, that's a positive one, as, uh, uh, you know, in terms of increased electricity supply. But if there's increased infrastructure cost, I don't know, maybe there could cost benefits <laughs> analysis there. So you don't necessarily focus on cost, but I'm just saying that for those that emphasize the issue of cost, who are still aligned to the existing technologies. Um, and, and those uh, other things about uh, potential rebound, those are some of the things that have been brought um, uh, to our attention. And then we're talking about the positive things here, the opportunity that is presented by embedded generation and the positive contribution that we all uh, recognize. Uh, with regards to um, embedded generation. And that is the last slide of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm.